Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'll be working in four different mediums to make the same Christmas card, showing you how to do that. This is actually the first lesson in a class that you'll be able to see more of at the end of this video. So if you enjoy this, stay tuned for the end so you can see everything that's in that class. And by the way, it's not at art-classes.com. So keep your ears open when we get to that section. Alrighty? To create these beautiful trees, it's very simple. We're gonna make some stripes out of a pigment going from a dark to a light and then do some line work on it. Really easy, right? So I'm gonna start with Canson XL and some water-based markers. And after I finish that, I'll show you some other mediums, how you can create the same thing. You may want to draw a triangle first and that'll help you to stay within some bounds so it looks like a pine tree and it doesn't matter what size, whatever size your card or your paper or your project, whatever it is, is going to be. And I'm using these markers by Sketch Marker. They're aqua markers. And I chose a mid-tone color to start with. And with water-based markers, they're water-based. That means you can use water with them. So once I get all the lines in here, I'm gonna add my darks first before I start any blending. And I just picked a dark blue to go with this color. And it really helps if you use a color that's gonna be in, in the region on the color wheel. So you don't wanna use, try to, try to use like a yellow to shade on a blue or blue green like this. But I'm using some water and putting the water down on the right hand side of the stripe and then pulling it to the left. So I'm like pushing all of that pigment over to the left side. And you know, depending on how much pigment you have in there, you may need to keep rinsing your brush so you end up with a, a drier, cleaner brush because you're gonna keep moving that pigment around. Once you're satisfied with all of those colors going across, and I kind of like it when they touch a little bit, it almost looks like you've done a really nice swoosh back and forth with a pen and kept that really simple. And then we're gonna add some line work to it. Very simple line work, don't worry, don't think I can't draw, I can't do this. We're gonna just go around the outside edges and don't worry if it's even or if it's not even. The inspiration for this was a whole bunch of art that I was researching for something from like the 60s. And there was a lot of stuff that didn't align quite perfectly and it was great. So I just traced around my triangle and around the base of the, the container for the tree and then draw just a bare minimum of branches coming out from it. And you can even let those lines spill out if you want to. You don't have to stay within the tree and put something on top. And if you do an X with a line through it and then put dots on the ends of it, you know, connect them or leave them just floating out there, it kind of has that 1960s feel to it. Just those, those kind of atomic sorts of design elements that they added. And I just use my handwriting for a sentiment, but you could use a rubber stamp for that. You could do all kinds of different things or just put your sentiment on the inside of the card. So next I'm gonna show you how you would do this with watercolor. It's a little tough with watercolor because watercolor is harder to control, but I've mixed up some blue green pigment. This is cobalt teal blue. And I'm, I tried to mix it pretty thin, but you can see I didn't get it super even. That doesn't matter a whole lot. We'll have some opportunities to fix that. And I tried pushing that pigment over to the left-hand side. And then I mixed some dark blue, some Indian throne pigment, and dropped it in the left-hand side, and then put in some thicker version of the cobalt teal blue, and dropped it in the center. And then all you have to do is rinse your brush and kind of dry it off so you're not adding more pigment and everything to it, and just sort of blend those across the piece. In order to do the same kind of thing with Copic markers, if you're familiar with those and blending them, that's not too hard either. You just need three colors you're going to use. So I'm gonna be begin with a mid-tone, just like I did on the other one, and just kind of making those lines stop short of the right-hand side of the triangle. 
is that's going to give me an opportunity to use a really light color. So I went from a BG13 to a BG00. And I'm just going to scribble on the right hand side of it because it'll blend it out as well as get lighter over on that side. And that's going to give me that transition to the light color moving off in one direction. And then all I have to do is add the dark color going the other direction. And this one is a BG57. You can use all different kinds of colors for these. They don't have to be blue greens. That's just what I chose to do for these. But you can see how it gives you that nice transition from the light colors on the right hand side to the darks on the left. And then draw whatever kind of pot you want. If you just want to make a straight rectangle, you can do that and then add the line work. Prismacolor color pencils. A little tough for this particular kind of technique. You'll just need to get some blending stump out in order to make the colors work. And I picked a light blue to start with. And what I decided to do was to eliminate that pencil line before I went any further. Because if you drag any color pencil around, it's better to try to drag the light color. If I started erasing after I got this dark color in there, it'd be really hard not to make a mess with that. So I'm going to put my dark color on the left, which is going to be kind of a blue greenish color, and then a green bluish color in the middle. And why am I doing that? I wanted to try to do some blending with a blending stump and some blending solution. So I dipped it into a little container that had some blending solution in it. So it's it's just a, a liquid that will break down some of the pigment from the, the pencils themselves and just smush back and forth until they start to blend. And you can see that I'm getting a transition from one side to the other. And then with my red pencil, I can just make the pot for the bottom and use a blending stump for that as well, and then add the line work. So I took all four of these cards and used the same line work to create a group of cards. These are so quick and simple to do. And I got 24 cards done in one day. And why is that? Because I created a clean and simple Christmas tree cards class. Yesterday in my video, I talked about wanting to teach you how to play, to take one idea and just start to do something different with it. Like try something different, try something new. And so what I did was take this Christmas tree and start thinking through things. I had a sketchbook out and I just would make lines and make more lines and then throw some color in here and some color in there. And what if I put this color on top of that color? Or what happens if I do this? And I just had a blast creating all of these different Christmas tree lessons. And so you can join me over at Art Venture. This class is only eight bucks. Yes, eight bucks. Really simple cards, but I hope it's going to teach you to play and that we can talk about playing over there in our adventure because it's just a place where I'm building community and I want more people to get involved in that, sharing their art and seeing the work of others and encouraging each other along the way. So if you want to join in, the link is in the doobly-doo. Remember, this is not at art-classes. I do have a Winter Wonderland in watercolor class that I am working on that's going to be coming up soon. So I'll have regular classes coming, but this one is a special little snack class with just these short videos. And I hope it's going to help you get your Christmas cards going for the year. I will see you again on Friday with some art similar to what I created here today, just a little crazier. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.